I want to briefly showcase something that I've been working on. Uh, this is sort of my first game, and I say sort of because I haven't packaged it up yet, uh, and I'll explain that later. Um, but for now, this is the game Minesweeper that used to be on the old Windows 95. And in case if you never played Minesweeper, or maybe you never figured out how to play Minesweeper, uh, what we have is a set of cells, <clears throat> and these are basically like buttons. And when we select one of them, we see a whole bunch of cells open up and you see a whole bunch of numbers. And what these numbers are displaying is the count of how many of its surrounding neighbors are a mine. So for instance, this number one has a mine, just one mine next to it. And that would be this one here. And if I click on it, you see that it explodes and it also displays all of the rest of the mines. And this thing up here that used to be a smiley face is now a dead face. And you'll also notice that you can no longer click on any more cells. If I click on the dead face, it resets the game and I can play again. So let's, uh, let's try again. Let's select and you see a whole new set of cells opens up. So what I can do is uh, basically if this is one, if I know that this is a mine, I can actually right click and that makes a little flag over it. And if I left click, I cannot, I cannot accidentally click it when it's a flag. You'll also see in the upper left corner, uh, this is the count of how many flags um, that you have left that you can select as a mine. Um, and it's also a good indicator of how many mines are actually in the game. Over here, I can see the number two, and there, so that means that basically these two are going to be a mine. And so the game can be thought of as sort of a process of elimination uh, as your strategy. And uh, it gets a lot more advanced. If I come over here, I can select intermediate, and now I have a uh, 16 by 16 grid and on the expert level this is a 16 by 30 grid so back in the beginners uh, this is um, let's go ahead and play let's go ahead and just play it so I select and it opens up a whole bunch of cells and I select these and Personally, I don't like to use the flag too much because I can get confused about which ones I'm clicking on and I can accidentally click on a mine when I mean to just set a flag. Um, but I created that option um, just for the, just for, just for tra tradition's sake. Okay, so when we win the game, the smiley face turns into a uh, face with shades. And again, you can no longer select any more cells. So uh, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. Uh, it's a pretty simple game. Going back to the reason why it's not, uh, why I haven't packaged it yet, I'm actually creating it as a multiplayer game. Now it is, a, it is itself a single player game, but the game that I actually want to create is going to be multiplayer and I need to learn all the ins and outs of how to set up uh, and program between uh, the server and the client. So let me restart this and I'll show you what I mean. We actually have three windows here. The big one is the server and these other two are actually clients. So I can play a game on this side, I can come over here and play a game on this side and I can play on the server over here. And the reason I'm doing this, like I said, is uh, I'm setting up so that I can learn how to, how to uh, program multiplayer for the real game that I want to do. So I haven't set up the scoring system on this yet, but as I learn how to create multiplayer, I want to turn this into uh, sort of like a tournament so that perhaps on one day I can uh, I can run a tournament to see how many times that a 
player can win in a, in a given day. And so by doing that, I can collect the scores of every single player who played on that day and then perhaps award uh, a player on their account for how many games that they won. So that's the that's basically what I've been working on in a nutshell. Um, the I'm not going to show you a whole lot of the programming for it, but uh, let's take a look at just a little bit of it. These are these are made in paint, and they're pretty simple. I just sort of modeled them off of the old game. And the actual gameplay itself, a couple of the things that uh, I'm doing here is uh, right now the game is reset. However, it is none of the values are set until I've clicked the first button. So when I click the button, you can see that the face up here is in the anticipate mode. And right now nothing is created, but once I release, it then sets all the values. Uh, the reason is because it needed to take in the value to know which cell that I clicked and then it, it runs through the algorithm to make sure that this cell and none of its eight neighbors are going to be a mine. Uh, this way every time that you play you don't accidentally make your first click as a mine. Uh, so that's an interesting little feature that I added in there. Uh, I noticed that in some other versions of the game. Uh, some versions of it will have it where the values are already set at the beginning and you can accidentally just click on a mine uh, on your first click. Uh, I want to do mine so that a player can always have something that is useful um, you know, off of your first click. So let's go take a look at intermediate. If I click, it opens up this large selection. And the algorithm that I use for this is pretty simple. Um, it's just uh, an implementation of uh, using a nearest neighbor algorithm, and that's done recursively. One other thing I want to show you is let's say I am setting flags and then let's say perhaps I lose the game and you'll see that the flags that actually were mines they remain the ones that I marked as as mines that are not mines uh, are displayed as X's so that's another interesting little uh, feature that I want to make sure had in this game I don't think that the X's are the traditional look to how that's done, but that's how I decided to do mine. Uh, another thing is you see that up here in the right corner, the it's, set, it's all set to zero, and then when I finally start playing the game, it starts to it starts the timer and runs the game all all the way up until 999. Should this number reach 999, then the game will lose. So, um, so yeah, that's what that's what I've been working on, and I haven't, like I said, once I get it, uh, all the multiplayer networking figured out, then I'll finally package it up and uh, possibly upload it online. Um, but again, it's this is mostly just a practice game for me to learn how to do. Uh, how to set up uh, multiplayer networking features for a dedicated server. Because um, like I said, this is not at all uh, necessarily a multiplayer game, but it's something simple that I can do for practice. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, maybe later on if I get it uploaded, maybe you can play Minesweeper on my version of it. Thanks.